Welcome back to Let's Go Design. I'm Jeremy Lucchini, and this is your SOLIDWORKS interactive web series. This is episode four of the Hot Rod Baby Buggy, and we're getting closer to putting a little speed racer inside this bad boy. Last episode, we talked about propulsion. In this episode, we'll start designing the chassis using weldment features and sketch techniques. We'll also visit a metal shop to learn about some of the methods that will help in building our project. But first, let's look at how SOLIDWORKS helps in designing our chassis. When working with the weldment features inside SOLIDWORKS, 3D sketching really helps speed up the design process, especially when it comes time to make changes. Let me show you how it works. Okay, we're gonna build the base of the chassis from scratch. The value is huge. I can get an exact representation of the parts in 3D to visualize how things will look, fit, and behave. There are a lot of components we are gonna bolt to this chassis, so fitment and clearances are crucial. The biggest benefit of doing this is we won't have to pay our fabrication guy twice. Now, this is a good example of the benefits of using SOLIDWORKS right here. Let's say I wanna make a change to the overall width of the chassis from 20 inches to 24 inches. All I have to do is make one change to the dimension and everything else updates. I have no errors and it's super fast. Guys, I've gotta be straight with you. 3D sketching is the most powerful tool in creating a weldment. It's a huge time saver. I mean, you would lose your mind trying to do this in a two-dimensional CAD system. Look at what I'm able to accomplish in very little time. Now on a project like this, it's important to keep up to date on how a metal shop works so that we can give them exactly what they need and we get exactly what we want. Let's go visit a friend of mine at his awesome metal shop. I've asked him to cut a one inch thick piece of aluminum plate for some track pieces. I also want him to get started on a custom welded frame that will hold everything in place. Knowing him, he'll be happy to show us around the shop. Should be great. We're here at E.T. Duval Metal Fabricators, and I'm with owner and SOLIDWORKS customer, Jeff Duval. Jeff, how's it going? Oh, man. Good, and yourself? I'm good, I'm good. How's things? Uh, we're busy. I'm ready for a vacation. Me too, me too. But this place is really awesome, and I want to show everybody how you guys cut metal. Can you show me the track pieces you're making? Maybe give us a nickel tour? Absolutely, let's go. All right, let's do it. All right, Jeff, you got an awesome water jet machine. Why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, this runs off of high pressure and garnet. I have 50,000 PSI coming down here, which exits a nozzle, to which point we have the garnet, which flows in there also, which helps cut the material. This is what the garnet is. It's actually a rock-like substance with sharp edges on it huh. in order to go through. And it doesn't even like cloud the water at all, huh? It's nope. fine stuff. All right, Jeff, what do we got for parts here? Yeah, we have your parts right here. It just came off the water jet. Now, when I originally designed the shoe plate, it was one piece, four inches thick, which that machine can handle, right? Yes, it can. But we didn't do that. Problem being, time. Costs a lot of money to cut a piece like that on the water jet. But seeing how you did this in SOLIDWORKS, you could easily break this up into individual components. So now it became very cost effective. Awesome. in order to do the parts like this. Not to mention a four inch thick piece of aluminum is probably cost much more than an inch. Absolutely. Now, I even like the design better. Once we put it all together, press in some bushings, which help with the friction of the tracks. So, I, I love the solution. You, you gave me the advice on how to fix it, and it ended up turning out like a better design. Man, I want that machine. You got 200 grand? Uh, no, I don't want that machine. I'll just keep coming to bother you. Sounds good. All right. Oh, Jeff, there it is, huh? Look at that. Yeah, it looks good. First piece of the Hot Rod Baby chassis. Yep. This looks good. The reason I had to do this was uh, to leave room for the, the axles that we're gonna put on top of it, but do you see any problems with me doing the rest of the weldment in aluminum? I mean, he already had to grind down this weld, but this piece is not gonna fall off. Nope, not at all. It's uh, all, They were all beat out beforehand prior to welding. Okay, great. Now, uh, there's some other things I want you to take a look at because the rest of the weldment gets a little bit more complex. So let me show you on the touchpad what I've got. And basically, if you look at the driving position, I want it to be a cool setup, like you're on a jet ski, like an old school jet yep. ski. One foot forward, one foot back, I don't care left, right. That's up to the, the dad, basically. But what I'm concerned about is having the chassis too boxy looking. So if you, if you see, I give you a lot of straight lines, try to make it fast for you guys to manufacture it here in the shop. But I'm hoping to add some curves to this. Do you see, can you give me any advice on what I can do here? Well, I think with capability of SOLIDWORKS, you can easily smooth those out, add some radiuses. As far as our capability, it's not a problem to do. Okay, and you guys can either bend one long piece or even buy pre-bent 
tubes you were saying. I don't even have to go rectangular, I can go tube yep, you can at go that around. point. Yep. All right, awesome. This place is great. Jeff, I can't wait to show people the final project. It's gonna be awesome. Thanks for all your help. I'm gonna get back to work, all right? Sounds good. All right, see ya. All right, get out. I can't believe what those guys can do with metal. That was incredible. Now, one thing Jeff said is I can take the liberty of smoothing out some lines of the chassis either by using round tubing versus rectangular tubing or add some curves inside my 3D sketch to avoid all the sharp edge transitions. Either way, it's good news because the design will look cooler and I'll end up using fewer pieces. That was fast. Okay, it's time for you guys to vote on this episode's design challenge. To recap, earlier you voted for the driver to stand. Then you guys chose handlebars over joystick controls. And last time you said you wanted polycarbonate fenders. Now there have been a lot of great comments on our website about the baby cockpit area thanks to people like Jason, Ralph, Caleb, and a few others. So let's make that our vote this time around. Should it be designed like a retractable top of a convertible sports car, or more like the cockpit of a fighter plane? It's your call. Next episode, we'll complete the chassis and start to talk about the batteries and the power. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about using the sheet metal features, check out the tips and demo section of our website. Until then, please vote and keep those comments coming on letsgodesign.tv.